Hi, this is Michael and I'm back with a raw, mostly unedited, uh, spontaneous video. Today with a um, debugging tip for IntelliJ users. While most of the time I'm actually a system out uh, debugging person, I learned a bunch of tricks from my friend and colleague Gerrit Meyer during the last couple of years and today I'm going to share one of those with you. The one I'm going to share is about non-suspending breakpoints in IntelliJ. So just jump right into it. So right now you're looking at an actual issue that we had in Spring Data Neo4j. It was about uh, whether um, network sessions would be correctly released and closed after an error happened. As you see, I have a bunch of system outs in that reactive code already. For example, I wanted to see if the cancellation signal that will eventually happen when I throw an error on purpose in that inner um, flat map that we have here. I have several more of those. This is one way to deal with um, signal propagation in reactive streams. But it's nasty and it's um, hard to reason about. Um, but yeah, I do both things. I use a debugger and I use system uh, out print lines. The thing I actually wanted to observe in our code is whether that do clean up after completion method of the reactive Neo4j transaction manager is actually called in an error case scenario. It goes deeper from there on because it will just return a mono, which is kind of a promise that must be subscribed to be dealt with later. And you need to go in that one as well. So in the end, you will, the thing I wanted to see is that final action happening on, on the mono. As you see, there is already a breakpoint in line 313. So let's see if the error actually happens by just running the test here. It's about um, acquisition time and re releasing issues. So it will take about three seconds to fail. So this is good. We still have that error in this branch of Spring Data Neo4j. The error is actually fixed. It was a bug in our driver, but I have awesome colleagues who are quite fast in that regard fixing things. But before we got there, actually claiming it's a bug in the driver, I needed to prove that it is not in Spring Data Neo4j. So let's just debug this, imagine like an hour of pain getting this setup to run. And yeah, I'll debug it and let's see what happens. Nice, I do actually have an, a breakpoint in the do cleanup after completion method. It's nice, I'm seeing it, it's good. But that one is actually from the preparation of the test data. So let's resume it. Nice. I get another hit here. Uh, and this time it's actually happening from somewhere down that line. This is your standard reactive stack. It's like impossible to read and you got to have some kind of training uh, to really go with the flow. But the program is stopped now. And that means the flat map operator here doesn't behave like it would used to do because the parallelism here that I implicitly triggered with the flat map just not happens the same way like it will do without actually stopping the whole system. So I'm kind of breaking the bug here, right? And this is one of these scenarios. You see, I've waited long enough. The bug just doesn't appear. And now, breakpoints like these are not helpful in that scenario. So what can we do to make these breakpoints a bit more useful? It's quite easy. You just can right click them and open the breakpoints tooling of IntelliJ. So you see, I got a bunch of those here. The first thing you want to do, you want to keep them enabled. 
the breakpoint in question. But uncheck the suspend box here and check the breakpoint hit message. And this is basically all you need to do. When done, the thing will turn orange. And when we go back to the test and run it again in the debug mode, There are two things happening. It fails again, that actually should fail. But we also see that thing here. Breakpoint reached at org spring framework data neo4j, blah, blah, blah. Reactive neo4j transaction manager do cleanup after completion. That tells us that the method has actually been called and the cleanup of our connection should have happened. It must fail after two times because I configured the driver in such a way that it only allows two concurrent connections and I will have more than two in this case because I have a range from one to five, which is more than two and they will run in parallel here. So these uh, messages can be configured in an arbitrary way. You can um, remove that tick mark here again and do your own evaluation. Hello from the nice break point and I don't know what kind of variables I have at the, um, at, the, at the side. Let's go back there to the transaction manager. We could, for example, lock the transaction, but I'm going to spare you this now. I'm just going to run this again. You see the failing already happening. Um, and this is my custom message. So in the beginning I said I have um, some kind of preparation work to be done. This is the reason I'm seeing this cleanup method called three times, not only two times. This can be dealt with as well. So let's jump back to the test. You see I've already prepared one breakpoint here. Let's enable that one go back to the settings of all breakpoints and make this thing I'm interested in actually conditional. Um, this is disable until hitting the following breakpoint, which I find super useful. That actually tells the system enable this only when something elsewhere happened, which is a super common case in debugging scenarios and something that you just don't get with system outs because you will um, scatter your screen with all the uh, messages of the world. Um, I want to leave it enabled after I hit this one more one time. So I can also uh, just don't suspend them in my tests so that I don't have to interact with the thing at all. Say done and debug it again. It fails as expected and we're seeing the message from the breakpoint we are interested in only two times, which is exactly what we want. In the debug log, there's also one more thing you just don't get with system out unless you have all the source code of all the libraries you're dealing with right at your fingertips, which is most likely not the case. And even if it would be the case, you don't want to put all the source code into your project. So what we're seeing here is the stuff uh, with, I took with me when I went to the colleagues who are responsible for our driver and said, hey folks, look at this, can you help me please? Um, and these are breakpoints basically I used in our network connection to see if stuff happens, if the pooling has been closed properly or released properly and all of this. So these are breakpoints in external libraries. So. There you have it, something you just don't get with system outs. So, and there's this short video. I hope you find this a bit enjoyable and maybe useful for your future work. Thank you and until next time.